Property represents SwiftUI. In this video, I will explain you the different use cases for add state and add published. Both of these property wrappers we can use if you have simple things or if you have simple properties that we want to make more fancy, so to say. And the properties that you can have with these are very basic ones like Boolean, strings, dates, colors, or you can even have arrays or collections of strings, for example. One of the main differences with these two property wrappers is actually where you define them, where you define your properties. If you are in a view and you want to find a property there, then you use add state. If you have a view model or an observable object and a property in there, would you would use with add published. So we see this in a small example. I have this small application which I already used for previous videos. So if you want to know more how I made it, you can check that the other videos out. But I want to right now focus on the way I defined here my properties. So I have here the possibility for this image to change the background blur. The yellow is just a bug from Xcode. Then the background brightness and the foreground brightness. And what I used in this example is app storage to store one of these values, the background blur and the user defaults. But this I can I can only use app storage for iOS 14. If I want to support iOS 13 too, how would I go about to save this value in user defaults? So we are going to change this back to a, a state. And I'm going to do this by creating a little helper class. So I create here a new file. I'm calling this blur setting because right now we're only doing this one property. I already know that I here will use combine and we are going to make a um, view model, an observable object that handles for us automatically the saving to user defaults every time this value changes. So a view model needs to be or observable object needs to be a class. I named this blur setting. This is a observable object. So this class, since it needs to save the value for the blur, it needs to also have this property. And we are going to make the, this property actually live in, the, in this class. So in my photo editor view, I'm not uh, using here, I'm not declaring this property here. So I'm taking this out because it's going to live now in our observable object class. And you see here, oh no, it's now complaining state because I don't use SwiftUI here. And actually this add state only makes sense in views. If you move a property from your views that previous was a state property in your views to a view model, you're going to use published here. So I'm going to just leave it for this now. And then in our photo editor view, because here st I'm still using this, I'm now need, I now need to create an instance of my blur settings. And since this is conforming to observable object, I need to use here not a state, but a state object because it's an object. So add state object var blur settings. And I need to declare or create here an instance of this. And this is my blur settings. Mm -hmm. So since I use this here in my view, it's going to complain on all the places that it wants to have. And the first one is my subview here and views here and it's the subview wants to have a binding to this property. And since this binding lives now in our observable object, we need to create a binding to our blur settings objects and the property that we want to have is this background blur. So if you have a binding to a property that lives in a observable object, you need to use your add a dollar sign before the observable object instance. I also use this to actually um, change the background, to actually change the blur here in my view. So I have to get this property now for my blur settings and it is the background blur. This is the two places I use this property in this view. So if you run this, it's still working. We have now this one property that drives our UI. And the only difference is we actually created a, observe, a observable object as a wrap around this property, so to say. 
So what's the benefit of this? Now in my class, in my Blur settings class, I can actually process this property in more detail. So what I want to do first, I want to every time my app launches, I want to get the value from my user default store. And we are going to create a initializer for this class. So whenever I create an instance of this class, I want to reach out to my user defaults and get this value from there. And I'm going to set this to my background blur. So my background blur, I'm going to set, and now I ask my user defaults, the standard, and I'm going to, I'm saving this as a double. I can use the double for key. And I need to here use the string value for user default. Since I already, I know I need to use it at two places, I'm going to create here a constant, which is my user default key. And this is, I'm just going to use the same name as this property background blur. When I ask my user defaults to return me the value, the double for this key, I'm using this user default key, um, this string value here. So when I launch, I directly set this property to the last one from the previous se uh, session. But now the question is, I had it from the last one, but I never actually wrote it to the user defaults. So how do I write it to user defaults and when should I do that? I need to, every time my background blur changes, I want to do this. I want to access the publisher that publishes all the um, changes of this background blur. And with this add publish, we get a publisher. So you can ask for this with add sign background blur. So I'm using here, I'm creating a subscription with sync and the sync closure. I get the new value every time the background blur changes. So in here, I can now use my user default defaults dot standard to set this value for a key and we're using here this value and the key is the same one we used before this is user or user default key and i need to use here because this is in the closure you have to here use self since closures can capture um in order to not create here memory leak or referencing i need to use here unknown self Otherwise I would, this closure would capture my blur settings class and my settings class keeps reference to this subscription unowned. So I'm using here unowned self. And now I did create here a subscription, but I need to, um, if I leave it like this, when I leave this initializer, my subscription would go. So I need to store this outside of my initializer and we are creating here a var subscriptions. This is a set of any cancelables and we start with an empty one. So open parentheses, closed ones. So now this is also what is complaining here. Result of sync is unused. This is because it's, this is kind of a hint that we didn't keep our subscription. Now I can use here store in set and you see here in any cancelable. So this is my subscriptions. So this end sign is a in out parameter because this store is going to change the subscription property here to add this one more subscription and I can keep it. This subscription is going to live as long as this blur setting is alive and it's going to be canceled when the, the init of this blur setting is called. This is a default behavior because we are here having a cancelable. So all cancelables are all automatically canceled when you go to the D init. So this was a lot of things, but Let's see if this is actually working. So I'm running this here on an iPhone. So now I have here my image and I can change my blur value. So I'm putting it on node 20 and I'm going to quit this application. Like so, so the user defaults have time to save it. And now I build and run again. So I launch the application again and you see we start again with the same blur value of 20 because our user defaults here were saved. You can also use here a pin statement in the sync to say save new value to a user default. And I'm going to print here also this value. 
So I directly here saved the first value because this is the first time it is called. In combine you have some modifiers to change the um, number of values that are passed down and one of them is drop first. You also have here drop first and then say how many of them are. So you can also say I'm going to drop the first 20 values. But in this case we're going to use drop first. So in this case when this application runs the first time this publisher stream already gets the initial value which we don't which is the one that we just retrieve from user default so I don't really want to do this. So now when I launch this user default value the first one is not going to be executed which you see that we don't have this print statement. And if I change this now you see it is going to save a lot of values because every time this is changed um, this user defaults the sync here is called. And you can also limit the number of values that are passed down in this publisher stream. And we can use this with some timing operators. And I'm going to use for this example here debounce. And you can say here a time interval. And in this time interval only one value is passed. So I'm going to use here dot milliseconds. So we're going to use 500 which is half a second. And the schedule, the schedule is the dispatch queue main. So now we can run again. And we, we should actually see a lot less print statements. So you see I did change it, but only after some delay time you see this print statement. So I can now change it. And then you see here again only this three print statements. See now I have a lot less print statements and a lot less work for my that is done here in this background. And so I can limit the number of times this sync is executed, which helps you. In this case, it doesn't look a lot, but sometimes if you have really heavy work that you do, this debounce can help you a lot. And I guess for this example, half a second is probably still too much. You could probably use here five seconds or 10 seconds because the user will not see this anyway. So in this example, I wanted to demonstrate you how you can, why you would have a property defined in a view and in this and where you would use add state and what the benefit is to use a view model and how you would use the same property in the view model because there we would use add published which is on the one hand responsible for redrawing the view so the view always gets the right value. And we can also with this add publish here use combine to um, create some work every time this value is changed. And, and combine really shines when you do some asynchronous work, which for user input this is always having happening asynchronously, it can happen whenever and in whatever order you cannot anticipate. And the other thing with this publisher streams is you can use, you can manage better the back pressure, how many times things are executed because you have really this one stream and you can just limit the number of values that are processed in a stream. If you are interested in to combine and you're having a question about some stuff of combine, leave a comment in the comment section and I can create more videos about combine. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy coding.